Hi, and welcome back to ENTP Life. Here on ENTP Life, we mostly talk about real estate, business, and just about anything else that interests me. As an ENTP personality type, that could be anything. So when you come to this channel, expect to come across real estate, business, and then from time to time, things that are completely off that topic. And if this is something that interests you, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe because this is the type of content that you can come to expect. Now, one of the best performing videos I have here on my channel is my experience with the FHA 203K loan, okay? For those of you who don't know what that loan is, it's essentially a federal loan that allows you to buy a property for 3.5% down. That's right, 3.5% down and they allow you to finance the renovations of this home. So if you came across a dilapidated, distressed, broken down house, and you wanted to flip that yourself just so you could renovate it and live in it, you could use this loan program and only shell out 3.5% to get the whole job done. It's a really cool program, and it's really available to those of you who are first time home buyers or who have relocated to a new area that is, I think, more than 75 miles from your previous property, okay? So it's something that you can use more than one time as long as you hit the requirements. Now, I did my first 203K back in 2009, and it was a home that I purchased as like an estate sale. It wasn't an estate sale, it was just an older couple that was actually relocating, and they were selling their old, kind of outdated house. So I purchased that home, renovated it, house hacked, and then I decided that, hey, I wanted to live somewhere else. I didn't want to live with college students anymore, and I still own that property. Now, I do love this program. It gave me my start on how to approach real estate investing from a flipping standpoint, how to manage projects, how to do construction, those sort of things. And I think it's a good place for people to start, especially if you plan on using hard money at some point in the future. With hard money loans, they're pretty much designed the same way because you're applying for uh, a mortgage, you're buying a home that's distressed, you're renovating that home, and then you're getting reimbursed with additional loan money to complete that project. So the two are very much the same, except one is federally regulated and the other is private, and there's also down payment differences. Now, I moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida at the beginning of this year, in January. And now that I'm in a completely different state, way more than 75 miles away from my first property in New York, I figured, hey, it might be a really good idea to do another two or three K loan. And the best idea actually was to share that entire process with you because I do have a lot of people who came to this channel because of that video and I wanna be able to show them step by step how you execute on this loan showing you how I get the mortgage, how I scout the properties, the renovations process, the paperwork that is supposedly really hard. Um, I want to give all those details and no better way than to do it in real time. So this is really the first episode of me using that 203K program one more time, okay? Now I'm guessing this might be about 10 to 15 videos in total, and it may be over anywhere from three to nine months, depending on how fast I find this property, what condition that property is gonna be in, et cetera. So one thing I think it's really good to talk about is where do you get started with this program, right? I always believe that the first thing that you should do is properly educate yourself on that program. So if you're interested, all you need to do, Google search, okay? Search FHA 203K loan program, loan guidelines, about, whatever the keywords are, and you're gonna find a lot of rich information. In doing my own research, I found a site that was fhaloans.guide. That's correct, fhaloans.guide, G-U-I-D-E. And on that site, it has a lot of information on the FHA loan programs. Now the thing that I went to go find out, because you know the, the laws actually vary from state to state a little bit. It's a federal program, but they're gonna set limits that are different for each state. How much can you borrow with this loan type? And that was something that I wanted to know in a new environment. In New York, the property values are pretty high, so the FHA loan limits are higher. 
the FHA loan limits are going to vary from state to state because they're looking at what are the average costs and they don't want people kind of borrowing over their heads. So they give caps in each neighborhood and I think it's important for you to know what is the cap in your area. So if you use this site, fhaloans.guide, you'll be able to search your county and know what are the, the caps for one to four family homes. Now for me, since this is part of my life, I invest in real estate, I don't believe really in you know, single family homes. If you're gonna use the FHA loan program and you're watching this video, I highly advise that you buy a multifamily home, okay? Something that's two to four units. And the reason for that is you want somebody else paying your mortgage, man. Basically, that, that's what you want. You wanna be in a position where you could live in one of the units for free while the other tenants are paying off your mortgage and paying off that house for you. That is the best way to go about house hacking, okay? And it's not as uncomfortable as how I did it. I was house hacking with college students, all right? I was living in the basement, renting out the upstairs and generating some cash flow from that, which is not necessarily the most comfortable lifestyle, but I was young at the time and I was able to deal with that. But if you're more mature, um, you might want a house hack with a multifamily house. So imagine you had this fourplex or this four unit home, you're living in one unit, right, as a single person, let's just say you took the smallest of the units and you were able to rent out the other three and in renting out those other three, you cover your entire mortgage and your cash flow. I want you guys to look at it that way and say, okay, let's look at what, what I could get in the multifamily range, all right? So when you're looking at that guide, check what are the loan limits. Review what are the basic requirements, okay? From what I remember and what I know, the basic requirements are you must have over a 600 credit score. If you're doing the two or three K, I even think that the limit is 620. I'm gonna include that information in the comment section below so that it's accurate, but I believe it's between a six or 620 credit score minimum for you to actually qualify for the loan. They're also gonna to wanna to see that you have you know, employment history, okay? You're gonna to have to be a W-2 employee or if you're self-employed, have strong enough financials to justify that your business is creating enough profits for you to afford a home, okay? I know a lot of us who are self-employed like to bring our net earnings as close to zero as possible for the tax liability, but when you're doing an FHA loan and you're showing that you only made $5,000 for the year, it may be tough. For instance, for 2018, I had a huge deduction that I claimed from depreciating real estate and I almost had an effective earnings of zero for 2018. And it's something that always gets pulled into question whenever I'm applying for loans or applying for debt. It's like, well, your, your income doesn't, doesn't make sense, okay? <laughs> so you know, that's something that you wanna be careful of because then you're gonna have to explain, you know, what was this huge uh, deduction for? How did, you, how did you do that, et cetera? And, and it could be confusing for the person processing your loan, all right? Which takes me to my next point. When you're dealing with this loan, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have somebody who is familiar with the FHA programs, okay? And what I mean by familiar is that they do a lot of them, especially the two or three Ks. Now, there's another live video that I did recently, which I might insert a card above, wherever that card goes, that I'm talking to someone about them applying for or trying to get a home and using the FHA two or three K loan. And their real estate agent actually advised them to go for what's called the Streamline K. Now there's two forms of the FHA 203K loan. There's a Streamline K, which is like for renovations that are $35,000 and less, and then there's your traditional FHA 203K loan, which is for renovations that are $35,000 and more, all right? Now, the, the Streamline K is streamlined for simplicity, so there's not as much bureaucracy and red tape involved in that process, and that's most likely why her agent was trying to push her down that road. But the 203K, the, the, the traditional regular program, does have a few extra steps, which I'll touch on in just a bit, but they're not that crazy to eliminate you from doing that, right? So you wanna make sure that you're educated on the differences by researching online about those differences and by watching videos like this that explain it in a little detail. Now to continue on with the criteria you, aside from having the minimum credit requirements and having verifiable income, preferably W-2 
or self-employed that's making enough money for you to afford a mortgage, you also want to make sure that your debt to income ratios are low, all right? The number is always changing, and I'm going to have an expert on here who's going to give the most you know, recent standards for the FHA 203k loans, what are the minimum requirements as far as you know the accurate credit scores, the accurate debt to income ratios, the minimums that you will need to qualify. Knowing these things knows allows you to position yourself properly so that you're not kind of going down a road that you won't get qualified for. All right? So making sure that you have that professional and you're educated is important for you to kind of go through. Actually, let me do a little quick research on what are the minimum requirements that I could find just so I could spit those off to you really quickly. Okay, according to this one site, Money Crashers, the minimum requirements to qualify for a 203k loan is anywhere from 620 to 640 on your credit score, and you must have a maximum debt to income ratio after you get the mortgage of 41 to 45 percent. Sometimes it's going to be even lower than that where they want you to have a debt to income ratio of 38 percent. Again, that varies from lender to lender what they're going to do, but the actual guidelines as stated here are 41 to 45 percent and you must have at least 3.5 percent down in the deal. Those are the three basic requirements for qualifying for that loan. So just by doing a simple search like what are the minimum requirements for an FHA 203k loan? Just searching that sentence, minimum requirements for 203k loan, you'll find the results. Loan limits for FHA loans by state, you'll find the results. So you could find that on the HUD website because it's, it's a program that's obviously administered by HUD. And you could find that on all these other supporting websites that are created to give you the information that you need. But of course, consult with your mortgage expert because if they're, if they're proficient in this program, they should be able to give you a lot of insight in what they're seeing as far as the minimum requirements and how things are changing. So you might be asking, who is my professional and who I'm using? So I made a friend maybe, I would say, in 2019 by the name of Matt Garland, okay? Matt Garland is also known as MG the Mortgage Guy. I met him at uh, DJ Envy and Caesars real estate seminars, and he was introduced to me by one of my partners, Harold Valestin, who sometimes speaks at, at these conferences. So I got a sense that Matt was energetic, very interested, and works with a lot of these loans. So I decided that, you know what? I'm gonna reach out to him so that we could collaborate on this content and make sure that people are getting a real look at what it's like to do the 203k loan program. So Matt is gonna actually be my mortgage guy on this deal. I'm gonna insert his information below and some videos that he did going over the details of this program because he's giving it from the mortgage professional standpoint so he knows all the nitty gritty of what it's gonna to take to get you qualified, okay? When do you need a support letter? What do you do if you have child support or child support income as part of your income? All these variances, he knows much more than me, and that's why I'm going to be bringing him in from time to time to give me some of that information. If it's not going to be him, it's going to be someone on his team who is highly qualified to give that information just so you guys are fully informed. Now, some of the additional professionals that you're going to need, which we're going to talk about as we proceed through the steps, is that you're going to need a 2 or 3K consultant, this person is there to be your handholder. They're doing the appraisals, they're reviewing the contractor's bid, they're reviewing the contractor's work, and they're keeping you safe. So think about that. You're gonna need a contractor on your team, you're gonna need a consultant on your team, and you're gonna need a really good mortgage guy on your team. So for those of you out there who are like, wow, that sounds like a lot. Well, first of all, we got the mortgage guy covered. So if you need somebody, check out Matt Garland, he does you know, hundreds of these loans a year, so he should be able to walk you through that process without a problem. Um, I am also a licensed contractor, not here in the state of Florida, but in the state of New York. I have my license in Westchester, so we're licensed and insured, and that usually allows us to do the projects in Westchester and even sometimes out of Westchester because they may accept, you know, a license from another jurisdiction as a license. There's some areas that don't even have 
a contractor's license. So they just require that your contractor has insurance, all right? So if you're in that you know, greater New York City area and you need somebody, you can also reach out to me. I have my team, my project managers. I have several crews in New York that can bang out your job and we know exactly what FHA is looking for. So if you need that help, also just reach out to me and I'll you know, assist you in that regard. So that only leaves you with finding the consultant that's gonna work for you, all right? And if you go to these websites like the, the fhaloans.guide, they even have a list of the consultants that you could search through and find the consultants in your area, okay? These guys have to be registered and available, so screen them and find out who you're gonna need. Make sure you have those in order so that you're able to kind of proceed smoothly, right? Now, since this is episode one, we're just talking about general information, all right? This is just to get the gears in your head turning. As we go through the additional episodes, I'm gonna get into the details of what are the next steps. For me, my very next step is to get pre-approved for the FHA 203K loan here in Florida. I'm gonna be working with Matt. He's gonna do a credit check, he's gonna analyze my income, and he's gonna give me an idea of where I'm at and what I'm gonna need to do to qualify, right? I have, some, I have a few things on my credit that may be questionable that he's gonna to have to review to see if I meet the requirements. And I'm gonna be completely you know, upfront with you. I'm gonna let you know what is my W-2 income, right? Because my income that I claim as income on my personal records is a combination of business income and you know, wages from from my job, right? My job in my own home healthcare agency is to be this, the chief executive officer. I take a salary as a W-2 employee. I also consult for another company which pays me a wage as well. So I have a base wage and I have these other companies that are capable of generating income for me. So he has to look at my picture, which is usually a lot different than others, and sit there and say, hey Carl, where can we get you approved? He knows I'm looking to do a four family, preferably, but I will go down to a two family if I don't find the right deal, okay? So I'm looking at anywhere from two to four families. And based on the research that I did, the loan limit for a two family in Broward County, Florida, is $478,000, okay? So if I find a duplex that's gonna be purchased and rehabbed for less than 478, that's gonna fit and I'm gonna be able to do that deal. Now on the high side, on the four family side, the loan limit is $718,000, okay? So that's my range, right? I wanna get pre-approved for anywhere between 500 and 720,000. The cool thing with the FHA 203K loan program is that it allows you to bundle in your future rental income to help you qualify. All right, so that rental income from the additional two or three units that I have also gets bundled in with my base salary to, to help me meet my cash requirement or my, my debt to income ratios for when I'm doing that deal. That's what makes it such a, such a good program for you if you're just getting started out. Now for me, I'm gonna occupy this home with my family and I'm gonna be renting out the three additional units for the time that's required. I have to live in this property for one year. That's another one of those conditions. You need to be an owner occupant, all right? So I'm gonna have to move out of my apartment, move into this new home, and live there for at least one year. And if I wanna stay there, I stay there. And after the one year period, I don't have to stay. I can move into an apartment again, or I can move to Orlando, I can move to Fort Myers, I can move to Tampa, and I can do this program all over again, right? So it's a good way if you have that flexibility to kind of you know, move to use this 3.5% down every one to two years and accumulate a few more properties that way, all right? At some point, I think it caps out at four or five properties. At some point, you won't be able to do it, but this is only property number two that I'm doing with this program, and right now, it seems that I'm functioning within the scope of the program, all right? You wanna be legal, you wanna be compliant, you don't wanna do anything sketchy or shady, so, I'm gonna show you exactly, you know, in full disclosure, what that process is like, just so you can see it and know how to replicate it for yourself. So in the next episode of this series, I'm going to 
hopefully be pre-approved and show you what that pre-approval process was. I'm gonna go over the list of information that Matt's asking of me, which is gonna be you know, a general loan application. Um, I'm sure my most recent pay stubs, my most recent bank statement, or wherever I'm holding my money. Um, and then he's gonna give me a sense of where he thinks I could fall or what I need to fix before we even start the process, right? So once I know what I'm pre-approved for and I have that pre-approval letter, I can then go into shopping, right? For the time being, I'm gonna have my eyes open for the right deal and start looking at what neighborhoods fit that $500 to $720,000 price range from two to four families, just so I can start getting a sense of where I wanna be and what you know, I'm gonna be able to qualify for. So I like it here, I live currently near downtown Fort Lauderdale, or I live actually in downtown Fort Lauderdale, so I like this area. I'm able to walk here to my office. Um, so I want to be as close to here as possible and get that four family or that fourplex. So that's what I'm targeting. So I got to keep my eyes open. I'm going to start looking at properties on Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, you know, all the, the typical standard methods. I also have an agent that I'm working with who's looking for me. If you are an agent in Florida or in the Fort Lauderdale area specifically, please reach out to me. Let me know what you're working with. Um, I only target distressed properties. So I want something that's like hurricane damaged, um, broken windows, you know, tennis wrecked the place, somebody mismanaged it. I want those foreclosures or, or even something that's really just old and outdated and somebody's ready to move on. I don't, I don't want something that's like pristine and in good shape because I'm not gonna be able to show you how to do this program if I'm buying a turnkey property. Another thing is I do not buy market rate properties. I always go for distressed properties. The economy is starting to look a little shaky right now, so there might be some price retraction, right? I don't want to be somebody who's underwater on my mortgage. I want to be someone who buys my property at 70%, 80% of the market value, so when the market does pull in, I'm still above water. If it pulls in 15% and I got it at a 30% discount, I'm st I still have equity and I'm still in the green, okay? So I need those to trust property. So if you're that guy or you're that woman, please reach out to me, let me know, we can do some searches and I'll do a deal through you, all right? As long as you find me the property that I'm looking for, like I said, I wanna be in the four family, three family, at minimum a duplex, but I really want something more. Because look, think about that. Duplex minimum or the duplex maximum is 478,000, right? Almost $500,000. And for two more units, right? <laughs> two more units gives me only a $200,000 bump up. So I could have a two family home with an average cost of a unit being $250,000, or I could have a four unit home with the average cost of a unit being $175,000. Which one do you think I want? Obviously I want more units for less money, all right? So that's why I'm trying to lean towards the three family to four family home, all right? So that gives you a sense of what my thinking is. The more units, the more rent you could charge, the more likely you are to cash flow on this property while living there. In a duplex, most likely my, my tenant is gonna pay maybe my mortgage and taxes or close to my, my mortgage note, and then I'm still gonna be coming out of pocket for utilities. In a triplex, I'm most likely gonna be able to pay my mortgage and my utilities. If I am in a four family, I pay my mortgage, my utilities, and I get some money from my pocket while I live there for free, right? So that's the target for me. So once again, thank you for joining me here at ENTP Life. I hope this video has been a pleasure, and I'll see you in the next one.